Hi, this is David. If you've been following the last few videos, then you've watched me create a, uh, an Azure DevOps project and add some code to the repository of that project and then build a couple of pipelines. One build pipeline here, which will pull code out of that, the source code out of that repository, compile that code, run any automated tests, and then take the binary, the resulting binaries, and put them in a place where we can get to them later. Uh, and if any step along the way fails, it won't, it won't proceed to the next step. Uh, then we also put a release pipeline that I've created that will take those binaries and then publish them to an Azure web app. And that Azure Web is right here. I've created that. You can see that this is that app in action running here. Just uh, pretty much the resulting, the the, the default page from a, a brand new ASP.NET Core application that says welcome. And I've modified to say welcome to GCAS. That's the only change that I've made. Uh, that works pretty well, but it's still not fully automated. What I'd like to do is to say that every time somebody commits a change to the master batch of my repository, then I want to kick off this process. I want to get all the binaries, I want to, co I want to compile them, make sure that, that change works. And if it does work, if it, if it compiles and it passes all my tests, then I want to deploy it out to Azure. That's my goal, and that's continuous integration. That's continuous deployment and continuous integration, and Azure DevOps supports that, and it's pretty simple to do. The way we do that is there's two ways to do it, one for the build pipeline, one for the release pipeline. In the build pipeline, what I need to do is edit the pipeline, and under triggers, this tab right here, there's a checkbox, Enable Continuous Integration. And there's some options in here to say that, you know, if there's already a, a build in progress, then don't, uh, don't kick off a new one. So what this will do is it'll say every time somebody commits any change to the master branch, kick off a build. And you can qualify that to say, you know, that uh, if there's already a build in progress and there is two commitments, then let's, let's combine them together into one rather than having one build for every single one. Um, so let's save that. I'm not going to save in queue. I don't want it to run right now. I'm just going to save it. Enable continuous integration. This isn't strictly necessary, but I like to keep track of the changes that I made to anything, including my pipelines. Um, so that, that runs the build process automatically when a change is committed to the pipeline. Now, what I also want to do is once if this build pipeline runs successfully, then I want to automatically run the release pipeline. And the way I do that is I select my release pi pipeline, I click on edit, and this first artifact right here is the one that specifies where I'm getting my source code from, and it has a little lightning bolt up at the top there. The continuous deployment trigger. I'm going to click on that, and over here where it says continuous deployment, I'll enable it. All right, and then I'll save that. Enable continuous deployment is my comment for that. And that's it. Those two uh, things enabled will allow me to do this. So what I'll do is I'll come down up here into files and I'll make a simple change. I'll go into this page and where index used to say welcome to gcast. I'll change that to say welcome to gcast. Have a great day! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, and I will commit that change. Because I'm all about the feel good changes right here. Now I've committed it, I've committed it to master branch. This, this isn't the only way. In fact, this isn't even the desired way to do this. You probably want to go through uh, some pull request process, but the point is that I did commit something to master to the master branch in this way, and what'll happen is that because I've checked this checkbox, it kicked off this build right here. So this that blue icon that's it's hard to tell the animation is actually showing that running. If I drill into it, I can see that this one is running. There's the agent job, it's running. There's the log, the output from it. And
And again, this uh, usually takes me about a minute and a half to run this thing, but uh, I won't I won't time travel this time. I won't pause and come back because I want to talk a little bit about continuous integration and continuous deployment and why it's important. And the reason that's important is because even if I've got diligent developers who are making sure that they they test their code, they make sure it compiles, and make sure they run all of their automated tests on their own machine before they commit anything to the master branch, that may not be enough because it's possible that somebody else did something that will affect their code. This this idea of the you know the you've heard of the butterfly effect that a butterfly flaps his wings in in uh Paris and somehow through a chain of <laughs> of circumstances it causes a typhoon in the South Pacific. Well, um, sometimes that happens. You know, the the uh, my change my code might work perfectly, your code might work per- perfectly, but when we combine them together, it breaks something. And I want to know that. And not only do I want to know it, I want to know it as soon as possible. And that's why it's important to have this continuous integration, continuous deployment. Because once I do a commit, I immediately get feedback. Did it compile? Did it did it pass all of my tests? In this case, it did, and because it did, and because I've enabled continuous deployment on my release pipeline, it automatically kicked off release five. It created a release and started running it, and you can see it is right here. It's in progress, and I click on it, I can see the details of it, and it's waiting. Something's happening, but it's just waiting for the output. Maybe if I refresh it, we'll see something better. Good. That was really quick. It actually ran. And if I look and see out in Azure, it has, in fact, deployed my changes. So without me having to do anything other than commit something to my master branch, both of those pipelines, pipelines ran automatically. So in this video, I've shown you how to implement continuous integration, continuous deployment through Azure DevOps. This is David. Thank you for watching.